Hello students, in this video we will discuss about the first trip. Now when you will have the first trip in your exam, you have some uh, few questions first related with the uh, different classification of the ribs. So you can see here that this is the first rib and whenever you will hold this rib in the, uh, your hand in exam, the first question comes is that it is a typical rib or atypical rib. So it is a atypical rib. Which are the other atypical rib? So other atypical ribs are the 2nd, 10th, 11th and 12th. Then the second question come on this first rib is that this is a true rib or false rib. So dear students you have to keep this thing in mind that ribs which are connected to the sternum directly are the true rib. So first rib is an example of true rib. So first to 7 ribs, upper 7 ribs are known as true rib. The second question comes is that uh, it is a vertebro sternal rib or vertebro chondral rib. So it is a vertebro sternal rib. Clear? Vertebro chondral ribs are the 8th, 9th and 10th. Vertebro chondral ribs are the 8th, 9th and 10th. And you have the two last ribs which are known as floating rib. So whenever you are having the first rib in exam, you should know about these three uh, types of the classification of any rib that first rib is a atypical true rib and vertebro sternal rib. Now we will come to the uh, characteristic feature of this rib. Now when you will see this first rib you can very well see that this is the broad end and this is the narrow end. Now the broad end of this rib is known as the anterior end of the first rib and this is the narrow posterior end. So you will have first identify the anterior end and the posterior end of the first rib. Now second and most important thing about the first rib is that when you will hold this first rib you can see that there is no twisting. The shaft is very uh, clearly flat. So when you will see from the side you will find, find that the shaft is flat and this shaft is having the superior and inferior surfaces so that we will discuss how to identify but you will find that there are two surfaces one is this surface another is this surface and there is no more twisting in this rib so what are the important things which you have to keep in mind whenever you are holding this rib that the anterior end is broad posterior end is narrow the posterior end is also known as the head now the characteristic feature of the posterior end is that it is having a single facet so you can see that it is a single round end and this single round end is known as head of the first rib. Then what are the another important thing is that there is no costal groove is present. Now generally when you will have the typical ribs you will find on the inner side there is a costal groove is present along the lower border. Now the next thing come about the first rib is that the uh, flattened superior and inferior surface has to be identified and for that we have to keep this bone on the flat surface. Now suppose if I will keep this bone on this flat surface, you can right now see that there is no gap between the table and the anterior end and table and the posterior end. But if I will rotate this and if I will keep it like this, now you can see that there is a clear cut gap is present between the posterior end and this flat surface. So you have to keep this thing in mind that you have to put the anterior and anteriorly, posterior and posteriorly and you have to keep this bone in both the ways on the table. Now if you will again rotate this and put it like this, now you can see both the ends are touching the table but if I will do it like this then you can see there is a clear cut gap appears near the lower end. So now by doing, doing this practice you have to keep this thing in mind that the side determination of the rib is belong to the side where both the ends are touching the flat surface. So if I am keeping this bone towards the left side, suppose this is the left side, this is the right side. Now if I am keeping this on the left side you can see that both the ends are touching the ground. But when I am keeping it on the right side now there is a gap is present. So this is not the bone of the right side, this is the bone of my left side, clear? So this is the first thing to identify, how to identify the side of the first rib. So how to identify the side of the first rib? You have to keep anterior and anteriorly, posterior and posteriorly and when you will put this uh, uh, rib on the flat surface, you have to keep this in mind, there should be no gap 
बिटवीन एनी एंड ऑफ द बोन एंड द सरफेस क्लियर द सेकेंड थिंग इज नाउ वंस यू आर श्योर दैट इट इज ऑफ द लेफ्ट साइड और द राइट राइट साइड नाउ दिस विल ऑटोमेटिकली बिकम द सुपीरियर सरफेस क्लियर बिकॉज इफ आई एम कीपिंग इट लाइक दिस नाउ दिस देर इज अ गैप इज प्रेजेंट एंड दिस इज नॉट द सुपीरियर सरफेस this is the inferior surface why because this rib belong to my left side and when i will put it in the left side like this this surface is the superior surface and that is the inferior surface which is touching the table now apart from that now you can see that this is the outer border of the first rib and this is the inner border of the first rib now inner border is concave and outer border is convex which is very well visible here now apart from that you can see this superior surface is having a tubercle on the inner border so this is the tubercle now this small projection which can be very well appreciable here here on the tip of my this pointer you can see that this projection on the inner border is known as scalenial tubercle now this scalenial tubercle provide attachment to a scalenius muscle and this scalenius muscle which will come and attach on this point divide the two grooves now you will have one groove on the anterior side you will have one groove on the posterior side so if you will see this bone from the superior surface you can very well appreciate that there are two grooves are present now there is a one groove is here now this groove is known as venous groove now why venous groove because here you will have the subclavian vein here you will have the subclavian vein now behind this you will have one more depression now you can see this in the uh, the side view you can very well see this depression is here now this depression is known as arterial groove which is for the subclavian artery so anteriorly you will have have the groove for the subclavian vein and posterior to the tubercle you will have the groove and this groove is for the subclavian artery clear now behind the subclavian artery here this area is for the of a muscle now this muscle which is going to insert on the superior surface of this first rib behind the artery where where i am talking about i am talking about this area you have this question there is a one area and this is the another area so there are two muscles which are attached here now here on the side of the first rib you will have the relation with the first digitation of serratus anterior muscle what is that first digitation of serratus anterior muscle clear then there is a one more thing is scalenius medius muscle so scalenius medius muscle insert here so scalenius medius will come here and the first digitation of the serratus anterior will come here clear and this is the scalenial tubercle and i told you that it receives a scalenial muscle that is scalenius anterior so scalenius anterior will come on the scalenial tubercle scalenius medius comes here on the area behind the subclavian artery and the first part of the serratus anterior or first digitation of serratus anterior comes on the border now there is a two more question first question is related to the tubercle of the first rib so where is the tubercle now this projection which is present on the posterior end of the outer border now this is the outer border if you will trace the outer border uh, when you will see posteriorly at this point you will find a tubercle now this tubercle is going to make a joint with the transverse process of first thoracic vertebrae clear so you have to keep this thing in mind that this tubercle purely make a joint with the costal facet present on the transverse process of first thoracic vertebrae now apart from that you have the most important question is the relations which are lies here on the front of the neck so this part is the neck of the first rib now in front of the neck you are having four structure 1 2 3 4 so these four structure from medial to lateral you have to keep in mind the medial most is sympathetic chain then you will have the vein that is known as first posterior intercostal vein then you will have superior intercostal artery and the lateral most is the nerve that is the first thoracic nerve which is the actually root of the brachial plexus clear so what are the four structure comes here it is sympathetic trunk or the chain then you will have the first posterior intercostal vein then you will have superior intercostal artery and you will have the first thoracic nerve root of brachial plexus 
क्लियर सो अगेन आई विल टेल यू सम इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग अबाउट द फर्स्ट ट्रिप सो द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन इज दैट वेन एवर यू हैव दिस फर्स्ट ट्रिप इन एग्जाम इट इज ए ए टिपिकल रिप सेकेंड थिंग इट इज ए ट्रू रिप एंड थर्ड थिंग इज इट इज ए वर्टिब्रो स्टर्नल रिप फोर्थ थिंग इज दैट इट्स एंटीरियर एंड इज ब्रॉड पोस्टीरियर एंड इज नैरो इट इज हैविंग द इनर बॉर्डर इट इज हैविंग द आउटर बॉर्डर इट इज हैविंग द सुपीरियर सरफेस एंड द इनफीरियर सरफेस then posteriorly this is the head which is having a single facet in then you will have the neck then you will have the tubercle clear now how to do the side determination for that you have to keep this this rib on the flat surface if the end is not touching the ground now here you can see the, it, this end is not touching the ground that means this rib is not belong to the side that is the right side but if i will rotate it and if i will keep it on the left then you can see that in the left side the both hands are touching clear now there is one more question comes in exam sometimes that what is the anatomical position of the first rib now my dear students you have to understand that side determination and anatomical position are the two different thing so when you are doing the side determination you have to find out it is it of right or left but when we are talking about anatomical position you have to hold this bone how it lies in your body so this bone is like in this position that means it is a oblique placed now why you have to keep it obliquely because you have to understand that whenever we are talking about the first rib you know that first rib is going to make the inlet of thorax and the thoracic inlet is not flat it is oblique so it is making a angle clear so the posterior end is at higher placed as compared to the anterior end so if you will draw a horizontal line from the anterior end if and if you will go posteriorly the distance between the posterior end and the this horizontal line is somewhere around 3.5 cm so you have to understand that anatomically this bone is oblique in the body it is not horizontal clear but when you are doing the anatomical position uh, the side determination when you are doing the side determination then you have to uh, use the horizontal plane you have to use a flat surface clear so these are the two clear cut difference which has to be there in your mind that anatomical position is oblique but when you are doing the side determination you have to keep this bone on a flat surface so these are the some important points which you always keep in mind before going to the exam related to the first trip so this is all for the session thank you